friends, the Lord be with you. Thank you so much. Welcome in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's so good to be back with you uh, after a week away. Um, I'm still carrying a little bit of my vacation with me uh, as I've come, but it's good to be here. And if you're visiting with us today, it's great to have you here as well. My name is Jonathan. I'm one of the pa- I am the pastor, <laughs> along with all these ministers. Um, <laughs> I'm still on vacation. It's good to be back uh, to do what we do each and every week, which is to lift up our voices as God's baptized people in prayer and in praise to listen for God's word to us on this day, to trust that God meets us and wants to feed us with his grace in this place, and so send us as his people into Timnath and Windsor and Severance and wherever the Spirit may lead us. And you are welcome in this place. As we uh, gather in, I'd ask if there are any announcements to be shared for the good of the community. Laureen had her hand first. Good morning. Next Sunday is our ice cream social. We need seven more ice cream bases to be made, and the recipe is out on the counter in the sign-up sheet. And we need four more people to help on Friday night to make the ice cream. And if you come make the ice cream, you not only get supper, you get to taste the ice cream. <laughs> so. And we need a few more people to sign up for Sunday. Got plenty of cookies, but uh, anyway, it's a lot of fun, and uh, hope you can help out. Then on the 17th is our final uh, speaker series. We have Kenneth Jessen, and he is going to speak about the Colorado ghost towns, and it will be very interesting. It's free, there's refreshments, 6.30 to 7.30. Hope you can come. Thanks, Lorraine. Bobby. I'd like to shame someone, I think. There's um, someone parking in a handicapped space that doesn't have a handicap tag, a bright red car, so it stands out. I call out people in parking lots when I see them pull into a handicap one, especially now that I have a <laughs> handicap tag. You have been warned. That car belongs to me. Oh. <laughs> and I bring Edith Brooks. And Edith sometimes forgets her handicap placard. But we need to park there. You have been told. So, no shaming. <laughs> that answers the question. That answered the question. Good morning. Thank you to everybody, many, many of you that have volunteered for Vacation Bible School that starts this Thursday. We have 21 kids, most of whom have no connection to this church and really, really, really would love to meet you. Well, we have a great base of volunteers. We 100% need you. If you're not signed up, you can just let me know or let Jonathan or anybody on the team know that you can make it Thursday or Friday and you will have the time of your life. So, Thanks, And if you're already a volunteer, your yellow t-shirt is right across from the kitchen. You can pick it up. And if you have kids coming, grandchildren, their blue t-shirt is in the narthex. Thank you so much. And I'll just add to that, in particular, we could use one to two more crew leaders. Um, you don't have to learn anything for that. It simply means you lead groups of kids from one station to the next. Uh, one to two more crew leaders so that we can divvy up these groups really well. So may God put that on your heart, whoever you are. The other. I have, I have one about information about the window. I'm going Wednesday out to LaPorte to put the trim back in the window, and she's going to have it laying flat, so hopefully in the next few weeks it'll be ready to come out here. So we'll have to get the people that, the young boys that we uh, belong, I don't see them here today, but, but we'll get them 
to help us because it's going to weigh way more than it did when we took it out there. Okay. Thanks, So it Jim. is ready. It's almost done. Amazing. I forgot two thank yous. One is to you, Gene, for creating a doghouse for VBS, and one is to Greg, who miraculously made us a really big cross really fast. So yeah. thank you both. Thank you. That's great. Well, let's prepare our hearts and our minds for worship now with our discipline of silence, becoming still before the Lord, and a ringing of the bell. That was great. Thank you. Join me in the call to worship. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you created us in love. Create us anew as we worship. 
Lord Jesus, you reconciled us with your blood. Reclaim our hearts as we draw near. Holy Spirit, you are moving the world towards redemption. Move within us and fill us with love for which we were made through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn is hymn number 321, The Church is One Foundation, and please stand. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Sure of God's mercy in Jesus, let us acknowledge our sin to the Lord and know the joy of forgiveness. Merciful God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sins and ask for mercy. We have not loved you with the pure heart.
Hear the good news. All the prophets testify about Jesus, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. As God has offered us peace and forgiveness in Christ, let us share that peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. You may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this, your word, that it may nourish us even today in ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your living word. Amen. Reading from Psalms 2, and you can find it in your Bible on page 489. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs, and the Lord has them in derision. He, he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with the rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, with trembling. Kiss his feet, or he will be angry. And you will perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Thanks. This is the word of the Lord. And now, children's message. Children of all ages. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Good morning. Is anything special going to help happen in church this week? Anything that you might be involved in? Well, I'm here to tell you that there is going to be Vacation Bible School. And some of you did it last year. What kinds of things did you do? Okay, yay. Anything else? Nothing else. Okie dokie. Well, it's going to be two hours of dancing. Maybe. Did we learn something? When we danced, when we sang, when we listened to stories, when we played games, did we maybe learn a little something? Because the Bible tells us that we need to learn to do right. And maybe Bible school could help us do that. Or maybe we'd forget in a year that it happened. <laughs> okay, yes, that's why, that's why we have it every year, so we can remember. <laughs> so this year, we're talking, the, the theme of Bible school is Pets Unleashed. And so I brought some pets with me. This, this, is a, this is my Emma Emerson dog. We had two dogs that look like this. And we have two dogs, Annie and Archie, who look like this. Okay, that had nothing to do with what we're doing. But anyway, so we're going to... But what do you have to do with pets? You have to feed them. You have to feed them. We do. And we have to give them exercise. We have to take care of them. And we have parents that take care of us. But God also takes care of us. And this week, we're going to be talking about Jesus cares for us. Every day, all day, every day, it doesn't matter. Jesus cares for us. And I'm going to teach you something right now that we're going to say. When we hear Jesus cares for us, we want to say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for taking care of us, for loving us. And the way we're going to do that is to... Mic drop. We're going to say nothing. We're going to do... Which means thank you. Can we do that? Thank you. Now, there are a ton of people out here I want you all to, to turn around for just a second. And I want, you don't have to stand up, but if you had any little teeny thing to do with Bible school, I want you to wave at these children and then we will tell them. Okay? Are we ready? Okay, if you had anything to do with Bible school, I want to see you wave your hand. Wave your hand. Okay. And we are going to tell them all. Let's try that again. <laughs> I don't want you to forget by Thursday that you need to talk to God, talk to Jesus, and say, Great job. Let us pray. And I want you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father thank, you thank you for Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School. 
open our ears and open our hearts to learn how much you care for us and how we can show we care for each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, would you extend your hand in a form of blessing on our children and follow in our litany in the bulletin. Church, what is your prayer for these children? The Lord be with you. We say, and also, and also with, with you. you. May you God's word and grow in God's grace. We say, amen. amen. All right, you can head back to your seats or to the nursery. Well, it is one thing to be told something and another to be shown it. Would you agree? It's one thing to be told or taught something. It's another to be shown it. Uh, it's one thing for an athlete, maybe one of your grandchildren, to be told, here's the play with X's and O's up on a board. It's another to see it perfectly performed out on the field or on the ice. Uh, it's one thing for a learning musician to see notes on a page, it's another to hear those notes played beautifully by a master. It's one thing if you're cooking in a kitchen to kind of read the recipe and see all the ingredients. It's another thing to see a great chef put it all together into something delicious and then to eat it, right? It's one thing to be told or taught something. It's another to be shown. So for six weeks in June and July, we were told and taught about prayer through our Lord's Prayer. Told by Jesus, pray this way. We tapped into each and every line of that great prayer. For the next five weeks, we're going to actually hear and see people praying in the New Testament. And we're beginning this morning in the book of Acts. It's the first book after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, often called the Acts of the Apostles, really the Acts of Jesus by the Spirit through his church. And in Acts 3, two disciples, Peter and John, are going up to the temple to pray and they heal a crippled man. And it causes such a commotion that they are arrested by the temple religious authorities. And we pick up the story in chapter 4, beginning with verse 5. Do what you need to listen now carefully and well for God's word to us from the book that we love. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with... Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this, that is, 
heal the crippled man. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today about a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you today in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated, ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. So they ordered them to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what will we do? For it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them. We cannot deny it. But to keep the matter from spreading further among the people, let us warn them not to speak any more to anyone in this name. So they called them and ordered them not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, Whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than God, you must judge. For we cannot stop from speaking about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them again, they let them go, finding no way to keep them because of the people. For all of them praised God for what had happened. For the man on whom the sign of healing had been performed was over 40 years old. After they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard it, they raised their voices to God, saying, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them, it is you who said by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the leaders have gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in this city, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, together with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, have gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, grant to your servants to speak with boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered was shaken. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. We say, thanks be to God. So holy God, once again, we have come and we open our lives up before your open word, asking for your Holy Spirit to do what only he can, which is to make this a word for each and every one of us, however we are coming in here today. Some of us, some of us are just kind of getting in here last minute and uncertain what we'll find. Some of us have been coming in here every single Sunday for the last 30 plus years. Some of us are here ready and expectant that you might speak a fresh word. Some of us aren't sure if you speak at all. Some of us are filled with life and energy. Many of us perhaps tired as we face another week, but all of us are here. So would you be so kind as to speak now? through these words humbly offered, and make them a way we, in fact, hear the voice of the living word, Jesus, and know his presence in our midst. 
We ask this in his name, and together we say, amen. What a day. What a 24 hours it had been. What began as an ordinary routine, going up to the temple to pray, Peter and John had been doing this for years probably, turns into a miraculous event. A crippled man is healed. He goes walking and leaping and praising God, which turns then into a miraculous response. Hundreds see the sign of healing, hear Peter preach about Jesus and resurrection and believe, turns then into a miraculous, that is unbelievable, response from the temple, the religious authorities, people like me. Arrest the charges something straight out of the civil rights movement in our own country. You'll know why you're here when you need to know. And they didn't need to know. So they were kept overnight, waiting, and finally in the morning light, questioned, okay, how'd you do it? By what name or power did you do this thing? Names, of course, open doors. We know this. Dad said I could. A name is invoked. Carries power, I like to think. Caesar's name could move armies. Name of a a demon? Could it perhaps grant some dark magical power? How did you do it? Peter answered, if you're wondering how we did a good, not dark or evil deed to a sick person, let it be known that this man is standing before you in the name of Jesus, whom, kind of rubs it in then, you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. Authorities don't know how to respond to that, so they send the boys out. They call the boys back in. They say, okay, here's the deal. No more speaking in that name. Peter says, well, you're the judge, so you judge whether we should listen to you or God. We've already made up our minds. Authorities finally send them out, and they find their way back to a friend's house and recount the whole thing. What a day. What a turn of events. What a 24 hours. I imagine them sitting in a little living room on couches, maybe sipping tea together, wondering what's next. And and somebody says, maybe somebody says, should we pray? Maybe we should pray. And I'm wondering if you heard how they prayed and for what. After that day, in the face of what will be a pending crisis, if you keep reading Acts, did you hear how they prayed and for what? First, how. They prayed by the book. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that of their 145-word prayer, almost 50 of the words are direct quotes from Scripture. You know, a funny thing can happen when you spend time uh, with new people or in new places. You can begin to pick up their vocabulary and speak with their speech. Have you ever experienced this before? Uh, My family and I lived in Virginia for seven years. And I don't know, maybe year one or two in there, a friend from the church, Charlie, came over, and he was going to be patching up a spot of church property. So he asked us, you all have any cement? But remember, we're in Virginia. So he actually said, y'all have any cement? (laughs) To which my wife, not from Virginia, from Denver, answers, I think there's some cement in the garage. (laughs) She then blushes and confesses to me later, I didn't mean to say that. But she'd picked up the vocabulary. She was speaking the speech, right? Sometimes this happens when you spend time with new people in new places. I know this is true. Diane Stapleton has been working with us since April. One of her favorite phrases is, that's amazing. Guess who's been saying, that's amazing, a lot more. I've been invited by her word into this wonder of the world. Sometimes when you spend time With new people in new places, you pick up the vocabulary. The same is true when you spend time listening to the vocabulary, the word of God in what we call the book we love, Scripture. God's word can, in fact, is meant to be the words by which we actually answer him back in prayer. 
Uh, the, the great theologian, teacher, martyr, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, actually said something very similar to this in his little book on Psalms. He wrote this, we must learn to pray. The child learns to speak because his father speaks to him. He learns the speech of his father. So we learn to speak to God because God has spoken to us and speaks to us. By means of the speech of the Father in heaven, his children learn to speak with him. Repeating God's own words after him, we begin to pray to him. We ought to speak to God, and he wants to hear us, not in the false and confused speech of the heart, but in the clear and pure speech which God has spoken to us in Jesus Christ. God's speech in Jesus Christ meets us in the Holy Scriptures. If we wish to pray with confidence and gladness, then the words of Holy Scripture will have to be the solid basis of our prayer. And here's the zinger. The words which come from God become then the steps on which we find our way to God. Isn't that something? The words which come from God become then the steps by which we find our way to God. In other words, Scripture can be this tool for us, not just for uh, doing, but for being. Not just for getting, but for becoming people who know how to hear and answer God in prayer. When you pray by the book, you learn the vocabulary of prayer so that you can pray with faith, even in crisis, and faithfully. Which is exactly what we know our Lord Jesus himself did, even on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken? Psalm 22, and it's exactly what we find these believers doing in the face of crisis here. They pray by the book, perhaps when they have no other words to pray. Sovereign Lord, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. That is not just a nice address to God. It's a direct quote from Psalm 146. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. It's you we're addressing here, God. You who keep faith. You who hold the world together. And again, when they pray, uh, keep going. By the Holy Spirit, through our ancestor David, you said, why do the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand. Did that sound familiar to you? It should have, because it's exactly what was read for us just moments earlier in Psalm 2. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. They're praying by the book, word for word, and in so doing, finding in the word of God to them words to speak back to God with faith, faithfully. They are saying, yes, there are powers at play, religious, political, but you are the sovereign Lord who made heaven and earth and all that is in them. Even this is within your hands, God. When they say, why do the Gentiles rage? The the peoples plot in vain against you. They're saying, yes, these powers have gathered together against Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, the Son of God, God the Son, sent by the Father, the one whom we love. But even that we see was within your plan to turn what is evil to good, to make Jesus the king. Could you not do that here, God? You see, the scriptures are not just giving them a a lens by which to see and understand what's happening. They're giving them words to speak in faith and faithfully, perhaps when they have no other words to say. Have you ever been at a loss for words in prayer? Have you ever felt like, I don't know what to say ever to God? (laughs) Or, Or maybe I don't know what to say right now. To God, or maybe I don't even know how this thing works. I know you have as your pastor. And so, what I want us to see is that from the very beginning, the church has learned how to pray by praying the book back to God, praying the word of God to us as an answer of our words to God. 
so that when you are perhaps going through a long period of trial, you can find words. Like how about Psalm 13? How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? Or, or you're, you're wanting to pray for our congregation, that we would continue to walk faithfully into the future, even as things change in the community. How about Hebrews 12? Lord, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus. Help us to keep looking to Jesus. Or you are at a complete loss for words because a 10-year-old in our community just tragically died. What do you even say to one another about that? What do you say to God? You could say Psalm 130. Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. When they're in the face of crisis, they are not at a loss of words because they've learned to pray by the book, and you can too. This is how the church prays. That's the first thing. The second, I'm wondering, is if you, if, you, if you heard what they prayed for, how and for what? Well, for what would you pray? For what would you pray in the face of pending persecution? That's really what's about to happen in Acts. For what would you pray when power threatened decides to threaten you? For what would you pray in the face of an unjust arrest? For what would you pray in the face of hardship? I mean, I'm guessing some of you, your prayers would be a lot like mine, like help, uh, protect, uh, I don't know what to do. Here's what they pray. It's verse 29, if you have your Bible open. Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Wait, you mean they don't pray for safety? God, you see what we're up against? Protect us. No. Wait, you mean they don't pray for retaliation? God, silence our opponents and crush them with your truth. No. The daily bread they pray for is boldness and to become instruments of healing in God's hand. It's a prayer of participation rather than protection. Participation, that is, in the life of Jesus by the Spirit, who, when he himself was tried, did not turn back, but gave his back boldly to the hardwood of the cross that the Father might stretch out his hand of healing and forgiveness, even as he stretched out his hands wide to embrace the world. And the church that knows Jesus and bears his name and sees this is what he has done, learns to pray to do the same. Lord, grant us boldness and stretch out your hand of healing through us. What might happen if the church in North America started praying like this? Not, God, you see the culture wars we're in, help our side to win, but God, give us courage to speak your word of mercy and resurrection in the face of a society dying by division. I, I just wonder, what might happen if Christians in Colorado started praying like this in the face of political strife? Not, God, stop the left, or stop the right, or stop whomever, but God, stretch out your hand of healing through us. Could we even help heal this rift? I, I mean, just wondering, like, what might happen if you, Timnath Church, if we 
started to pray like this. Not, God, just keep us going another 140 years, but God, would you perform signs and wonders through the name of your servant Jesus? We bear that name. Would you do it through us? And don't get me wrong. It is not wrong to pray for safety, for protection, even, even for vengeance. I mean, if you pray by the book and you pray the Psalms, you are going to start praying those prayers. And prayer is the one safe place you can go with all you got, the anger and the fear. You're never meant to go looking for persecution or trial. However, you are always meant to boldly participate in the life of Jesus, and that can get risky. It can even mess up an ordinary 24-hour day. So what might happen if you start praying for that? Here's what happened then. When they had, gav- when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. Apparently, prayer, this kind of prayer, is a vehicle the Spirit uses to shake up the church of God, to share in the life of God for the world. And I am not at all convinced that the Spirit doesn't want to shake us up some here. So the question is, will you dare to pray like this? Learning to pray by the book, looking to be filled by the Spirit, that you might get in on the life and work of Jesus in Timnath or wherever you are this week. Lord, grant your servants boldness. Stretch out your hand. Will you pray that with me? In the name of God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. I want to invite you to stand in body or spirit. One of the things that Christians have done for centuries, having heard God's word of grace, is to respond with words of belief. And we do that through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into heaven. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And so like Peter and John and their friends, we do lift up our voices together to God, praying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Would you pray with me? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, you made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and you have made us and crowned us with glory and honor and called us your own in Jesus. How marvelous, how amazing is your compassion toward us. Happy are all who take refuge in you. So we do that now, lifting up these prayers and our lives with trust into your hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, the nations do conspire and rage and set themselves against one another and so often against your way of peace. We see it weekly 
in our news. We read it daily on our phones. So we keep asking today for your peace. Reconcile us, O God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Peter and John were made prisoners for their witness to Jesus. We pray for those in prison and for our neighbors who feel imprisoned by addiction, depression, finance, loss, or some other struggle. Be present to them by your spirit as you were present in your servant Peter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You have made the earth and the seas, so we ask that you would not stop caring for these your work. Heal your creation where it groans and show us how to rightly care for what you've entrusted to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The disciples were recognized as companions of Jesus. Would you shape us in our life together here to live in such a way that our friends and neighbors would know we are too? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, your saints raised their voices to you in a moment of need. And we do the same, raising our voices in lament for the loss of a young student in our own town. Out of the depths, we cry to you and ask your merciful hand to be upon the parents and siblings, classmates, teachers of Oliver Stratton. And because you have promised that nothing can separate us from your love in Jesus, not even death, help us to lean on the hope that Oliver rests in that love now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, your spirit filled the believers. As we come to the table of our Lord, let your same spirit fill us and feed us with the life of Jesus. These things and more we ask, trusting you here, for we pray in his name and spirit and gather up all our words as he taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we approach this week, I've already mentioned so many times from so many people, Vacation Bible School coming up, and it is amazing to see how many of you have already pledged your time uh, by making things, by giving things, by preparing to give yourself this week. May we continue to give, even now, that our Lord might take it and bless it for his good work. Let us take our morning offering.
Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, for giving us these gifts to share. Now we ask that you would stretch out your hand through them and through our lives, that it all might be used for your good work. Through Christ our Lord, amen. We have offered our gifts in our lives, and we see, you may be seated, the gift of God already displayed for us. This is the table of our Lord, and it's a table of remembrance, communion, and hope. We come here to remember all that God has done for us, creating us, sustaining us, but most of all, in the sending of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We come here to have real communion, real fellowship with Christ by the Holy Spirit, and we come to eat in hope of the day when we will feast in the kingdom of God and all things shall be made new. All who confess Jesus Christ as Lord are welcome at this table. Let us go to God in prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy and right it is, and our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and in all places, O Lord our God, almighty and everlasting Father. You created the heavens with all their host and the earth with all its plenty, and you've given us life and being and preserved us by your providence. But you've shown us the fullness of your love by sending into the world your word made flesh for us and for our salvation. For this precious gift of a mighty Savior who has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God. And with all the company of heaven and all your saints on earth, we worship and adore your holy name, singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, All thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. You are holy, O God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In this meal, we remember his perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and in anticipation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. And together, we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, and upon these gifts of bread and cup. That they may be for us a true communion in the body and blood of Christ our Lord. And grant that as we are joined together in him, we may attain unity of faith and grow up into all things in him. As these grapes were gathered from many hills into one cup, and as these Grains from many fields into one loaf, grant that your church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, we pray, come, Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it. Remember me. So as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the saving death of our Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, We'll receive communion by intinction, which means you're invited to come up the center aisle, receive a piece of bread, and dip it into the cup before returning to your seats. There'll also be a station here in the south room. 
If you are unable to come forward but like to receive communion, we would love to serve you where you are. Uh, We might just need a little help spotting you. If you're not ready to share this meal, that's okay too. Uh, You're invited to use this time in prayer and reflection. But all things are ready, so I would invite the elders to come forward. friends. Eat ye the bread of life. Eat ye the bread of life. Chain the bread of life. You. Linda, the bread of life. Clarence, the bread of life. Phyllis, the bread of life. Bread of life. Russ, the bread of life. Amen. The bread of life. Jim, the bread of life. The bread of life, Mary Ellen. The bread of life. The bread of life. Bread of life. Bobby, the bread of life. Frank, the bread of life. Kay, the bread of life. John, the bread of life. Annie, the bread of life. Amen. Lorraine, the bread of life.
of life and the cup of salvation. Jim, the bread of life, the cup of salvation. To God. Amen. Jane, the bread of life, the cup of salvation. Pam, the bread of life, the cup of salvation. Thanks be to God. Thank you, friends. Since we've been fed by our Lord at this table, let us give thanks to him. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Now, Father, grant us strength and courage to do the work you've given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Let the Church of Christ say, Amen. Church, this week, may you continue to learn to pray by the book, to pray faithfully and with faith. And then may you dare to pray for boldness, that the Spirit might use us to witness to the name of our Lord. May you rest under his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve.